A very warm welcome to the Weekend Focus right here on Look Up TV. Today in the program we talk about the COVID-19 vaccine rollout that has seen over 162,000 Kenyans getting vaccinated. We'll also be looking at the lockdown and its side effects and of course inside politics with the former Prime Minister Raila Odinga now testing negative and right into the politics. With me on set is Robi Karani, who is an advocate and political analyst. Thank you for having me. Okay, Karibu. Oh, and our sign language interpreter for today is Josephine Ouko. Welcome to the program. So, Robi. Yes. Uh, COVID-19 vaccine. We have uh, over 160,000 Kenyans vaccinated. The president himself has now led by example. Some people are arguing uh, he has been vaccinated pretty late, considering we had so many doubts. Okay, first of all, uh, happy Easter. But uh, I would say we had a, a rollout program on who is supposed to get priority in terms of vaccination. Mm -hmm. And it would seem pretty uh, bad for the leaders to be the first ones to get vaccinated well we have people on the security line uh, guarding us every day we have the doctors and uh, practitioners in the health uh, industry fighting for us and helping us to fight this covid and then we start mm. with our leaders it wouldn't be a good picture per se so i don't i don't take much from it i think it's just that he t his time had come f according <laughs> to the priority and we accept it for what we are. We call on people to uh, get the vaccines so that as soon as possible, we can all go back to having our lives as normal. Okay. Yeah. And just an understanding the vaccine, because there are still some Kenyans who are skeptical. So the government in relaying the message and just communication, we'd say strategic communication to the people that now uh, this vaccine is safe you can use it do you think that has been done enough okay we we i wouldn't say it has been done enough but it's ha it hasn't been done for so long intentionally and this is why the reason being that we received our first batch of around a million doses mm. and stuff and we have a country of around 50 million now one of the 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 failures or the one thing that we are supposed to avoid with COVID is overcrowding and observe social distance and that. So if we had a rollout where we would be calling on everyone to go take vaccine, we would actually be creating a super spreader mm -hmm. by trying to end COVID. So the, the approach that they have actually taken is just taking uh, the back seat and having people uh, rolling out the program uh, in a quote-unquote silent and social distance way mm -hmm. that we won't have crowding in hospitals, we won't have uh, issues of malpractices here and there because we have some, some order we are following. We are hoping that by the time everyone gets in line or someone was skipped, uh, we have done much of the rollout. Um, there's, there's also politics into it because now uh, the one that was, that's on the rollout is AstraZeneca from Oxford. Yeah. And then we've had a shipping of as Sputnik, Sputnik yeah. from Russia, mm -hmm. and I'm so sorry, and it's it's. I would say it's it, it has brought some emotions mm -hmm. with the people we've been quote unquote fighting in the BBI process in the political scene now seemingly endorsing the Sputnik. Sputnik is not free; it's around eleven thousand. Yeah, and we, we've seen we've seen uh, Ahmed Nasir, Donald Kip career taking the, the Sputnik vaccine from Russia. Mm -hmm. And uh, so our researcher, Kemri, which is mandated to do the research, shouldn't Kemri be the ones uh, informing us that how different the vaccines are, which one is uh, better than the other, are they the same? So is there enough information? I, I, I saw something on, 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 on a local newspaper, and there was a headline saying, uh, Chanjo our dosi our silly. So Sputnik is being uh, quote unquote branded. Uh, That's for the, the, the vaccine for the rich uh -huh. because they don't have to observe any list. They don't have to 
follow any order you just pay and you get your vaccine from wherever you are but uh yeah for for to a wide extent there would be need to to sensitize the public on the differences between the two and anything that we have but we also we noticed that we are trying to get anything that would have uh, side effects on people and so we are not yet done with AstraZeneca and now we want to ask the government now to explain to us What's about Sputnik but if the rich can afford it then let them go and learn about it from where <laughs> But uh, anyway, it's it's not a laughing matter for mm -hmm. per se. It's just that uh, from the branding that has come and the politics that is uh, around the vaccine, there have been some skeptics who have avoided uh, taking the vaccines. We have teachers who are on the list for taking vaccine, being mm -hmm. not being the ones leading the front per se. And we would want them to be the ones to take that so that when we start it's only, it's only a couple of weeks then we start talking here about, oh, children, children should go back to school. How are children going back to school? And that's what we are trying to beat. You know, sometimes, most of the time, most of the time people look at just short-term things of where we are, yeah. but rather, rather than looking from where we are going. Uh, our KCSE students will be finishing their exams. I've seen people making jokes about how they will wear, they will don uniforms to make sure they go past the zoning areas because we expect the kids won't be locked from where they are and they would be allowed to go to their different places even if they pass the zone area. Oh. And by and large we've had a smooth sailing I would say. Okay. Yeah. And uh, according to doctors and of course even the Ministry of Health that what, what the vaccine does it, uh, it stops one from having a severe illness in case uh, you get COVID-19. But again, it is voluntary. So no one is being forced to get the vaccine. It's voluntary. So what, is your, what are your thoughts on the same? Because it, while it is voluntary, uh, the cases, the third wave is here. The infections are, we have surging numbers. Well, you will remember that the last time I was here, mm -hmm. when we started talking about COVID, I said that we need to be looking forward to the vaccine's arrival and how the same would be rolled out. But at that particular po point, Kenyans were more focused on KEMSA reports. Scandal. And, and, and scandals, which have turned out to be a joke in themselves, rather than what we should be doing and what processes we should be taking. Uh, it's unfortunate that uh, the president had to give us lock new lockdown issues at the same period like last year, but we are wiser now. People will tell you that once we had this lockdown and shutdowns of anything, there are some things that last time stopped, but this time they didn't stop. All they had to do was move back to online. Mm -hmm. We had the issue about courts closing, and it was a big issue because criminal cases, you had to go there physically. Now with the lockdown, they've introduced virtual for criminal cases within Nairobi. Mm -hmm. And it's and it hasn't taken much fighting or anything. You just know if this one is, if we can't get in, then we access them through uh, 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 online platforms mm -hmm. and all that. Mm, I, I, I have no quite, per se, opinion about the vaccine. I am yet to take it. And my own reason for not doing that is I would fail to take, I would feel very uh, ashamed to take the vaccine before uh, every person who's over the age of 58, mm -hmm. before health workers and doctors and before teachers because in as much as I tell myself I do essential services. But if they don't want to show up? But I would rather mm -hmm. not having taken than taking it and then when the time those that don't show up begin to show up. <laughs> then they are saying we don't have vaccines because uh, your political leaders came here and took lines before us. Mm -hmm. it's, 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 it's not a good thing to be proud of. I think that's why they've created Sputnik. I would advise all politicians to just take Sputnik. Because they can afford it. Because they can afford <laughs> it, yeah. It, it, okay. it saves us. But on the other side, it, it is said to, to be pushed by some people who look to earn over 20 billion within that period because 
it's retailing from Russia at mm -hmm. 1,000 shillings and its sale value in Kenya is over 11,000. So he, and he has to do 1 million doses. So by selling 1 million doses, he actually makes around 10 billion profits in a, in a month. Mm -hmm. So and, and looking at uh, the AstraZeneca, the vaccine that is on rollout here in Kenya, uh, the first jab then uh, has been uh, affected, then there's need for another jab yeah. after a period of eight weeks. Yeah. But now there is a problem with uh, bringing in the second set of the vaccine, just given the restrictions are, are around the world and the logistics. Mm -hmm. So again, are we going to receive that second round of the vaccine? In terms of receiving, I'm pretty sure that one will happen. Mm -hmm. We had skeptics for the first uh, batch. They were saying it won't arrive or we have uh, problems with the, the, the area, we have travel bans and all that. But uh, look, we are dealing with health issues and we're dealing with state issues. And there was, even if we were to ban all flights, we would never ban a flight to bring vaccines to Kenya. That, mm -hmm. That's impossible. So uh, the second batch is expected, I think they said it will be in, in around two months time. Yeah. And uh, let's wait and see what happens with that because we started speculating about the first batch. It's here, the rollout has begun. Now we have batches from the private sectors from everywhere. Mm -hmm. And if we are able to do uh, mass vaccination, then the better for all Kenyans because uh, we will be done with this phase and looking up to a new phase. What we are afraid of is maybe the side effects. And since we haven't researched much about it, then we would take time getting the vaccine slowly so that people can report back. Can observe yeah, as well yeah. how it progresses. And now the third wave has led to the lockdown. Now we have the five uh, red zones, the five counties, uh, Nairobi, Kajado, Kiambu, Machakos and Nakuru County, which are now on, on lockdown and high alert because of the surging of, of numbers. But now this lockdown has, uh, it affects certain sectors, of course, immediately. Hospitality, entertainment, different, different sectors, very severely. And before, in the, in the, in the first lockdown, these same sectors were affected as well. And the president, yesterday, uh, in his address at, at State House, he mentioned that he is aware that these sectors are being affected and they will see a possible way to cushion but if people aren't cushioned in the first lockdown, then are we expecting any cushioning at this time? Well, I, I want to remind you that uh, during the 2020 period, majority of economies around the world went through a recession. Mm -hmm. uh, USA recorded a recession. Uh, the, by recession, I mean the actual shrinking of their economy rather than expanding. So uh, we've had the same event in South Africa, in Nigeria, but Kenya and our neighbors, Ethiopia and Rwanda, for, for some good strategies, we didn't actually uh, go through a recession. We just had minimal growth. We didn't have a growth as expected. And from all that, we, the president has announced this in the middle of uh, when we are about to finish the first quarter. And from the first quarter, we can already see projections of where the economy is supposed to go. So he, s he targets the, the sectors that we can work on and that we can use to reduce the spread of, of, of COVID. Yeah, some, sometimes uh, poli policy decisions have always have casualties. There are people who will suffer from every policy decision mm -hmm. you make. For the greater good. But uh, looking at it, uh, mm -hmm. he likes to say, and he has said this a lot of time, that. Uh, we can always revive an economy, but we can't bring back the dead to life. Mm -hmm. So looking at it from that angle, we have to look at what do we sacrifice and how do we make those sacrifices uh, not uh, catastrophic to the people, but trying to also save life in the, in the, uh, in the meantime. Mm -hmm. And um, we had, the last time here, uh, we brought this 
lockdown issues, he announced an economic stimulus uh, some months later, and we're expecting the same thing. Mm -hmm. And what I'm, 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 I'm sure about is that we have had those uh, setting and analysis of which sectors in the economy would be affected and how we would stimulate the same mm -hmm. to come back as we are rolling out the vaccine. And it's, 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 I feel bad for people in the hotel industry, the entertainment industry. I think I am uh, part of that industry in a way in mm -hmm. terms of my businesses and all that. But uh, you look at it from what can we do to overcome this together rather than pointing fingers and calling the president Mr. Curfew and Mr. Lockdown. And we are not providing a solution in the end. Yeah, I feel like they should have been brought to on board and tried to give their suggestion on that. But where we always come back and what I always tell Kenyans is the government is a set of people from yourself. They are a reflection of you guys. And if you want to talk about how we solve public policy issues, you don't go there demanding that they must agree with what you're saying because every what you're saying, somebody on the other side is not agreeing with it. And we have to come to a balance. Because one of the things I have seen, especially with, uh, with the church leaders mostly, is the attitude of, entitlement when we are trying to come up with a solution mm -hmm. that you should let us do this you should let us do this look I am telling you right now I am a lawyer I, I observe the law and I am asking you if you want to go to church on Sunday go to church nobody will arrest you from the from from the church there is no a police officer will come inside the church to observe your your social distancing and whether it comes to a that or to count the number of people who went to a church, to the church to find out your capacity is only limited to this there's nobody who will do that and so by 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 doing that the the churches that are not observing the rules are going scot free so we are hoping that we as in Kenyans and the church leaders and the government can sit in one table and agree okay hapa we have a we have a loophole. Okay. We have a problem with this. We have a problem with this. How can we address it and move to together as Kenyans? When it gets to a point where it's the president who has to tell you to wear a mask, it's the president who has to wear you to tell you to observe social distance, you get to a point and realize you're talking to adults. You're talking to parents. The people who depend on these people. And a simple rule as just put on a mask, observe social distance, so that we protect, you protect mm -hmm. yourself from death. So that calls for um, a collective responsibility yes. of different people. And, and it's, it's why I'm saying I do agree with most of their issues, and they are already on work. But we need solutions on the table, rather than pointing fingers on, just let us be. So, and, and the partial lockdown does not sit right where the it does not start right with many Kenyans, and there have been uh, demonstrations. People want the president to unlock, unlock the counties. They don't want the lockdown because businesses are failing. People do not have food. They do not have jobs. So they're actually scared of dying from hunger other than dying from the virus. OK, now I will ask you this. What was one of the discovery on the most uh, vulnerable persons in the society with regards to COVID. They came back with a result of anybody above the age of 58 mm -hmm. is at a higher risk of dying from COVID than anyone else. Where are a majority of these 58 olds and above located? They are in our, in, in our rural areas. Yeah. They are not in the urban areas. And by locking down your access to them, we realize that Nairobi and the metropolitan areas are the places with high numbers. They have tried to tell us that uh, the super spreaders came from, uh, from political rallies, but I kept asking, where did we have by-elections? In Kabuchai, in, uh, in 
in Sambuin, mm -hmm. in Bungoma, and, 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 and such. <laughs> and there was none, uh, n not high numbers recorded in those areas. We still had high numbers recorded in Nairobi where we didn't have a by-election at all. And it's not about the political rallies, it's not about the churches. We're just trying to do a collective responsibilities where we don't even expose our grandparents to this because they are safe from home and they can have vaccines from there so that by the time we are done with all this hula baloo, we will, will have at least saved a life. There's nothing that helps you from moving from Nairobi, going all the way to Meru to see your grandmother, uh, infecting her with COVID. You come back here and you recover, but your grandparent will not. Mm -hmm. No more danger. Yeah. Okay, and we've seen even former Prime Minister Ray Lodinga, he now is negative and he looks energetic, but he has told his story of how he was uh, under the oxygen ma machine, given his age. So does this then uh, tell Kenyans a different story? Do we now understand COVID in a different way when someone of influential now t gives their side of the story? We have had this conversation before and I've always told you that we started with uh, the question of who no job to on a BBI, um, to on a <laughs> corona. Then we got to a point, anybody listed, you are told government has bought you, this is a conspiracy. Mm -hmm. Then the third wave came. And those numbers that Mutahi kept on s reading turned into people we know. Now you would sit and think, okay, I know someone, so and so. I went to uh, a court, I won't say where, and I had someone working, for, working my files from the court. So I was supposed to go to court to, like tomorrow. I call him the day before. And he texts me, he says, I. Uh, uh, I will call you back. So I get to court on virtual link the next day and I give someone I work with the phone number. I tell him, call this guy just to find out if those things are on the file, like we had agreed. They call, they call, he doesn't pick. Uh, we go to court, we, we finish, I find out he had done them. So when, once I'm out of court, I call to say, okay, I found Zilikua, we can, when I call, uh, Someone from his house picks up and tells me, okay, uh, Mr. So-and-so uh, succumbed to COVID last night. Now you can imagine my face mm -hmm. about the person I'd even given someone the number to call because he's not picking my calls. Call him. I'm entering court. Call him because he can't pick my calls. And then when you find out, he went with COVID. And from... So it's becoming a, a reality. The third wave actually yeah. brought that to the people to realize, okay. And then now we have obviously the rebels from, I had COVID, I, I, I recovered. So don't be afraid of COVID, just have it and you will recover. Mm -hmm. Okay. But. Um, now it is well, different. Well, I, I am calling we on people and mm -hmm. especially the young people to help us move in a collective way to remember to keep life sacred above all things. Politics will come and go. Um, relationships, quote unquote, will come and go. But once a life has ended, it has ended. There's Can't nothing. have it back. Yeah. Okay, we are taking a short break here on the weekend focus. And as even we're talking about the COVID-19 vaccine rollout, we here at Look Up TV encourage you to continue observing the COVID-19 protocol rules have been given by the Ministry of Health. That is, wash your hands, sanitize, keep a safe distance. Don't go too far. Welcome back. You're watching The Week in Focus. And on the second part of the show, we're going to be looking at the politics. The run to 2022 political general elections that are coming next year in 2022. And what has been said this week. Robbie, yes. so let's just look at the president and former prime minister. They made rounds yesterday to look at different uh, government projects, just the progress so far. And uh, this is uh, the first time in a while that we've seen them together because people were starting to get worried. What is happening to the handshake? Is it getting shaken? Is it the 
is this the end for that relationship between the president and, and Raila Odinga? Well, <laughs> uh, let me start by, by expressing my condolences to the people of Kiamba. This week they lost their member of mm -hmm. the National Assembly, Honorable Paul Koinange. Um, on the part of the handshake and Baba, we, we all know he was sick. And we didn't expect him to be with uh, Uhuru on, on, on his deathbed. But the, temperature, but the temperatures were already... But what it's, it, it all happens with succession because I think for a moment there, mm. some people actually believed that uh, Baba would go. And there was a, a, a different tune to what Baba was saying because uh, we made the joke about here about Baba is in hospital and then all these Sererak people will wait for him to get better and then come back and say Baba Niachie. So they did an, a clever thing and <laughs> launched their alliance while Baba was still uh, in recovering, hospital, uh, recovering mm -hmm. to, to show that they can actually do it by themselves. They don't need, they need to break out from, uh, from the ODM leader. And from ODM itself, you, it's a party. They have their own ideals. You will remember that most of these Jubilee members, Jubilee High leaders came from the coalition of ODM before it was a party with saying no to Akatiba. It was built out of a constitutional process. So in the absence of their leader, you expect some small heads to run around and say this, say that, say that. By the time he was recovering, uh, they had launched our, our One Kenya Alliance. Ruto was already talking about he can work with him. Mm -hmm. uh, Malala had been kicked out of leadership in Senate. And it's just politics as normal. And from him coming back, we, 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 we are happy. Mm -hmm. For, for one part, we mm -hmm. are happy as a nation because he's, he's, he's part of a, a, a strong leadership in Kenya and he represents a bigger chunk of Kenyans per se. Yeah, with the launching of the projects, I think uh, he, he, it, it was good for the two principals to at least show that willingness to continue working for, mm -hmm. for the nation, even amidst all. Okay, and, yeah. and looking at different government projects, the president, so the absence of, of the deputy president in looking at different government projects, does that raise any eyebrows? Well, it doesn't because the deputy president is actually just a principal assistant to the president. He's supposed to be sent to places where the president can't get. So if the president can go and observe that project, then the deputy can relax, wait for it to be sent to a, to a different duty where the president but, but, will not but be if getting. The, if the president and the deputy president were in good terms politically, then wouldn't he have accompanied him? Uh, why do you mean, what do you mean uh, good terms politically? Uh, we know that there is a, a lot of instability in the Jubilee party. And even the deputy president last week uh, in an interview, he mentioned that if his people continue being frustrated, then he will just leave the Jubilee party. Because we've seen MPs, uh, senators allied to him, they have been frustrated. So this is, this is what I want to say, and I want to say it live for anybody who's watching me. If the deputy president feels like living in the house of Jubilee is untenable, let him leave the party. All those MPs that are claiming to be frustrated from the party, let them resign from the party and seek the seat as with their new party or whatever party they want to, to vie for. And you don't uh, attack your own house while you're outside. If there's something that you need addressed in Jubilee, I believe that you should come to the Jubilee house and address it with the right uh, offices. You have Tuju in that office. We recently lost our executive director. And there are people who have been employed to run the party, to go on with the, with the affairs of the party. If you have issues with the party, there are places to raise them and not in political arenas and interviews of saying, of threatening to leave if they don't go to your line. We are, we are past that. Mm -hmm. As a nation where we have gotten, we are in the nation of consensus building and talking to each other. The issue about you coming with uh, chest-thumping ideas and telling us you ha we ha either have to follow them or 
you will live because if you live we lack air you can live <laughs> you seem to be in support <laughs> of the, uh, of the kileweke then not not <laughs> really about the kileweke it's about running what uh, what i would love to see is the actual discipline of political parties and observing all these principles from the political parties one of the things that i do uh, adore about uh, bbi is the issue of putting uh, the two third gender principle on political parties is something that i actually proposed at KICC before all this whole labalu began because I believe that if the party was to administer uh, the two that gender principle it's it in its candidates for elections then uh, in, in, in inevitably we would have a more or less that representation. that representation in parliament even if we don't like we don't get all the the, the women we need mm -hmm. we would have a uh, uh, a pool from where we can nominate candidates to fill those positions. Mm -hmm. But uh, when we start having political parties being uh, being run as if they are, they are offices uh, or Mpesa shops where if you don't agree, I, I will go. And you have to now come and cajole me. Come to the office. You have a constitution even on, 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 on the website just download it, look at the processes, use the processes. If they don't use the process, you can go to the political parties tribunal. From there you can go to court. That's what uh, Isaac Mora has done. He was sub suspended from by the, the disciplinary committee. He went to the political parties tribunal. They ruled against him. He went to high court. He suspended that until the high court case is done. And that's what we want to see, not hula baloos about going to interviews and talking about the party as if you are not a member of that party. Uh, okay, moving on. So, uh, Raila Odinga was talking about uh, yesterday in that joint address at Theta's, and he talked about uh, infrastructure. And so, is this part of President Uhuru Kenyatta's legacy? Because uh, we've seen uh, the SGR and uh, different roads being launched, even the expressway from Mombasa Road to Westlands. So is infrastructure part of Uhuru Kenyatta's legacy? Well, infrastructure is an enabler, enabling to the economic pillar. When back in 2009, the country uh, then was made of a grand coalition government passing. It was a government of both political parties after 2007. And uh, they formed what was has come to be known a blueprint called Vision 2030 of all the things that we want Kenya to have achieved by 2030. And m all the government regimes had to at least abide by that because that was our focus as a nation and not as political parties. So even if a president comes, he has to at least align his vision with the Ke with the Kenyan vision. And from from the vision 2030 it had three pillars we had the economic pillar mm -hmm. we had the social pillar and we had the political the political pillar what comes of it is we try to focus on politics mostly and either close a blind eye and spread propaganda from politics to the social and economic uh, pillars of the vision 2030 because our goals were clearly set out we wanted to have a democratic system that is people-centered, that is all-inclusive, that is participatory. We've, by and large, had that for a period. It is only now that we, we start to realize that we participate in budget-making process. We have public participation forums within the ward, within the constituency, and people have actually started to accept that. On the economic front, we were supposed to be achieving two digits. Kibaki could not do it even if Vision 2030 was passed by it. His highest uh, growth rate was 8.4%. Uh, Uhuru has come and he's managed to, before 2020, had managed to do an average of 5.63% from 2013 to 2019. Now, I've already talked about uh, during the pandemic, most countries went to recession. Mm -hmm. He didn't go to recession. He went to a small a growth, growth, a slow growth of 1%. And when you look at it from all angles, it's, the legacy is already made. 
we only had, if you want to look at it as a presidential uh, uh, comparison, you would say in 2007 we had a re-election. Uh, it was highly disputed. The president chose to have himself sworn in at night and the country broke into a quote-unquote mini civil war. Mm -hmm. For the president, for Uhuru Kenyatta, he just got mad, ranted on TV, and agreed to go back for a repeat election, which even inevitably the other side opposed. At the end, he called them again back to government and to speak as one nation. So That's you see why this as part of his legacy, that he, it he is. is more peaceful leader? We, we, we have experienced the sort of... Uh, the cannibalizing the office of the president. Mm -hmm. It is Uhuru that has brought to us the issue of approachability of those on the seat. We have the issue of thinking about peace before all these shenanigans and not just stamping your way into politics. The, the, the infrastructure was part of the, de the aimed growth. You know, we, we look at it from a point where there's been a narrative so far that anything that uh, Uhuru does that is quote unquote good is either a bad debt or it was Kibaki's project to begin with. Mm -hmm. It's a narrative that has been created but so whether it's harder for him to Yeah, watch so to whether you like it or not, you will still you will still appreciate it. He's the one who's done that. We didn't have a road between uh, Hospital Hill and uh, James Gishuru. He built that. We don't talk about it. What we had as outer ring road from uh, Ruaraka Allsops to Pipeline was something totally different during Kibaki's time and what we have now. But we move past that because we are looking more for the political legacy. If you, if the day he finishes his exam, I like to tell people that uh, you don't get your results while you're still in school. So we you wait finish for, wait your for school, him to get there. and then once you get out, now you tell us. Now we can see from the results what we have and what we had. Okay. It's a simple thing. Uh, okay. In 2012, registering a company or getting your passport was hell. You had to go to to, to Sharia House with physical documents and mm -hmm. fight and fight your way to getting documents after 21 days. Right now, you do it from your phone, uh, the comfort of. Just an, an so, a website. So there, there are many things to yeah, say. Yeah, there are so many for, things to say. In his legacy. Yeah, but okay. we have to wait for him to finish and say, for us to this judge. one was not where we wanted. This one was a bit low. This one was exemplary done and stuff like that. Okay. So seeing uh, the president and uh, former prime minister together has sort of brought uh, faith back into the handshake and BBI as well because that has not been happening in a few weeks now. Uh, and, and you're saying it's because the uh, former Prime Minister was unwell, but it was even before that. But now just looking at the BBI, uh, Kakamega Governor, Weekly for Paranya, as well as Busia, Sospita, Ojamong, they have said it clearly that BBI for now is not a priority because we have the COVID-19 and we have to take care of Kenyan citizens. Well, These are ODM g governors. It's not so what does this say that uh, is now former Prime Minister getting a fight, war, right in, at his own backyard? No, 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 no. It's a created war. I, 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 I laugh about it because when BBI started, they were saying it, they are taking slow. Why do they have to go all around? Now when they started to go to, to, to get to constitutional provisions and collecting signatures now what is the hurry for BBI for it it's it's not like it's the end of the world and and what Kenya will still remain now then the president announced uh, uh, measures for COVID during the third wave and one of the things that he did was close parliament and the bill is currently at parliament so in actual sense technically speaking BBI is on hold it's on hold given the we directive. Political the rallies are, are banned. Mm -hmm. uh, parliament has been taken on a break. So, and the BBI bill is in parliament. So, basically, so we are, they were just repeating. Yeah, they, they were just making point, uh, note of the obvious mm -hmm. that we are on hold because of COVID. And we are, we, are, we are focusing on the rollout of the vaccine and how to actually contain the numbers. Because okay. when you look at it, the numbers are actually uh, 
devastating because our neighbors from Nigeria have four times our population. Yeah. But we are ranking the same in terms of deaths from COVID, mm -hmm. which should not be the case. Okay. We should be, if, if people are times four of us, the people dying in Kenya should not be the same number as people dying in Nigeria. True. Yeah. So is now BBI in a, what, a moral dilemma? Because in as much as we want, uh, a group of people want the constitution amended, but we have deaths from the COVID-19 third wave. So is there like a moral dilemma? You want to amend the constitution, but again, you want people to get better. You want to kick out the virus. No, le let, me, let me explain to you something. Uh, in politics right now, there's no, uh, even in gambling, there's no, but the person who has the last card and, and wild cards plays the long game. Uh, you will remember before Maraga left, mm -hmm. he handed Uhuru an advisory to dissolve parliament. The constitution does not give a time limit to when Uhuru will do that. So even if he wanted, he would dissolve parliament today and we will go back to by elections for members of parliament. And he has not done that. Uh, the process for constitutional amendment has to be debated in parliament and then brought to him. If he touches on the matters under Article 255, that require an, a referendum, then he will forward the bill for, or the question to ABC for a referendum. Mm -hmm. So all these things are already provided for, but we are currently in a, in a worldwide global pandemic, pandemic that we are trying to resolve. It doesn't mean that the country stops running. It doesn't mean that the people creating expressway, since there's COVID, they stopped working. But people have a problem when, you, when we talk about uh, funds for refer directed to the referendum for the BBI bill, while we need the same funds to get vaccines in the country. Okay, this is what happens. Whenever even we have a by-election, uh, what happens is there has to be the requ requisite necessary procedures mm -hmm to get to the point where we request for a referendum or we request for, and the IEBC is the one that takes the mantle from that point on. And when we give them, they go and do a budget of how much it would take to do this. If we have a by-election, and I am glad to say the, the BBI process has brought some good things with it. We had the death of Yusuf Haji, and we are not going to have a by-election in his uh, in his county because the people there decided on consensus and his son was elected and opposed and that's what we are trying to encourage but on that sense i am trying to explain to you that it wouldn't stop anything uh, if we were talking about bbi but if we are to talk about a referendum the, the, the bill must have passed through parliament, gone to the president, been presented to the IBC to do a budget proposal. So that from the budget proposal, when they are announcing the, the, the referendum, is when they will get that money. So as of now, there has not been any release towards money for a referendum. It is something that we are speculating mm -hmm. for the future. Same way we are speculating about the second batch of the, the vaccine rollout, is the same way we are speculating about the referendum. Maybe it will come after we've had uh, mass vaccination of over 30 million people in Kenya. What we don't know. But sitting and trying to make it as if uh, there's money that has been set aside for a referendum, but, well, but we have corona and but we are know, not if, fighting if we it. keep having it, the, the conversation and moving it forward, then it means that we, we can be closer to the referendum. When, when, so when Kenyans have a, an issue with the planning and the directing money to a cause that is not much of when, a priority when as compared to and, health. When and Raila were launching the handshake, they stressed on one thing, that they wanted to bring a national conversation about the, the nine thematic areas. Mm -hmm. And whatever we are talking about right now is that national conversation. So when people speculate about what will happen and talk about money that has been released, which has not been released, then we end up not having the conversation. We end up talking about ifs and what ifs. Part of the nine thematic areas was corruption. We have had corruption even with the pandemic. 
did it stop people from stealing from Kemsa? Mm -hmm. That we have a pandemic or even the cartels have taken a break, they are not stealing from us anyway. No. The country has to go on. Uh, there are processes that have to be taken. And before we get to the money allocation for a budget, it's the same thing. In January 3rd, uh, IBC attempted to declare a vacancy in the office of the governor. And the, the next thing that we had is the talk of a 6.5 billion budget for holding a by-election within Nairobi. Did we have that by-election? Mm -hmm. No, we didn't. There was no funds released for that purpose. But we talked about it as if... As if the funds were yeah, released yes. already. Okay, so if, even as we conclude, just uh, looking at uh, now BBI, and uh, it has stalled. It has stalled because, of course, Parliament, as you have said, the bill is supposed to be being discussed in Parliament, and uh, that, of course, will not go for now because of the President's directive. Of course, as advised by, by the Ministry of Health and other stakeholders, for the sake of resuscitating our economy and, of, and uh, the fatalities from the COVID-19. So I'd just like to pick your thoughts uh, finally on uh, President Uhuru Kenyatta during, now during this time. So what is uh, the fate of his political ambition given that we are only 15 months away from the general elections? Okay, I will address it as, as, Brief. as Brief as I can, and I will say this, that the president in profession is a political scientist. His deputy is a doctor of science, and he needed to build bridges in this country. So he needed an engineer to build bridges. Engineers build bridges. And the engineer in our political scene mm -hmm. is one Raila Amolo Odinga. And there's their way the, that way there would not be BBI without Raila and there will not be bridges without an engineer. And in saying that, I wish to uh, note that at this po point in time as a country, we are looking forward to moving together as one, mm -hmm. uh, devoid of our political affiliations, devoid of who we support for president come 2022, because we are not even guaranteed of that 2022 with the pandemic that we have today. Okay. So in my parting shot, I would like to call on fellow Kenyans uh, to embrace the rollout of the vaccination for, for COVID-19, to observe the protocols and the rules given by the ministry in terms of uh, social distancing and wearing a mask, and most of all, to fight the cartels that are sitting on our seats. Okay. These uh, seeds belong and, and to and the youth uh -huh. and belong to us. And it is shameful that we continue to let them sit on uh, these high places in the name of calling them cartels. If they are cartels, then we can also be cartels. And we will get them out of that seat. Mm. Okay. And, and just one last thing that, that I forgot to mention. Uh, former Prime Minister has uh, registered as a presidential candidate come 2022. And from records, he says he is not yet declared until we are done with BBI. Mm -hmm. So in the same sense, I have not yet uh, decided or declared to support anyone for presidency mm -hmm. until we are in that election period. Because as of now, we are not in an election period. We have people without jobs. We have people who are sick. We have people who have been exposed to okay. uh, a virus that is killing people all over the world and me talking about 2022 and who should become president is irrelevant to mm -hmm. the nation and to the world at large i would be lying to myself if i told you uh, we should vote for so and so for come 2022. so we know he has not uh, come out to say that he has but uh, there are allegations that he has already filled up the forms and now he, that he's ready to become president. Well, Paranya filled the forms, Joho filled the forms. Mm -hmm. They're just Kenyans and they are following uh, their, their processes at their own party. I am, unfortunately, I'm not a member of ODMs. I wouldn't talk much about how they do and what they do. I have my reservations about how they conduct their 
grassroots elections. I believe it's a way of manipulating people so that they can use the same things in the elections to cry foul while well, they are the actual perpetrators of what they do in their own mm -hmm. grassroots elections. Okay. But uh, as of now, and I will say that Kenya has one president and the president is Uhuru Kenyatta. And in my area, uh, we don't uh, divide or distribute the, the, the property of our father while he's still alive. I don't have a presidential candidate yet. <laughs> okay, and thank you so much for being part of this conversation. You're literally uh, part of the weekend focus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. they, should, they should just write uh, a, a section there of resident and put the date so that people can remember that. Each and every time. <laughs> we'll be looking at that with, with management to see if that's possible. <laughs> okay, we have come to the end of the weekend focus right here on Look Up TV. I have been your host, Nancy Nalima, and our sign language interpreter has been Josephine Oka. Do have a lovely evening. <laughs>